I'm Mark Lanfear. Uh, I am the science guy from a company called Kelly Services that is out in Troy. Today I'm talking about STEM, and, and STEM's kind of a funny word. When I first learned about it, I wasn't exactly sure what it meant. Does anybody think that they know the, what the S part of STEM might be? Do we have some guesses? All right, we got science. You, what do you think? You don't know, what do you think? All right, well, we got it right off the bat here. We got a heck of a group. So it is science. Um, the, the T is technology. Um, the E is, is engineering. Uh, and what do we think the M might be? What's that, mathematics? Yeah, absolutely. So these are four categories that we all study in school. And what we're going to talk about today is how do they lead to the things that we might do after school is over. Um, and I enjoyed school. I stayed in it for a long time, so stay as long as you can. But um, once you get done, then you have your career and you have your job. You have what your mom and dads do. You have what your friends are, are working towards. And these are all different types of careers. Everybody you know, sees on the TV about athletes and, and things like this, and there's some great things about that. But there's also really good things about science and math and technology. Um, so really growing uh, career base out there. And as we can see, there's millions and millions of jobs available. Now, sometimes when we think about science and technology, uh, we think about astronauts or we think about doctors. And some of those things seem pretty far off. I remember when I was going to school, I thought, geez, how hard would it be to be a physician, to be a doctor? And I thought that was really difficult. But, you know, other, uh, other types of careers that are in science are like our teachers at school. So our science teachers, our first grade teachers, we look back and the people that inspired us. Um, myself, I went into science and got science degrees and, and got a degree in biology. And what I get to do now isn't sit in a lab and do biological things, but I get to write because that was always a passion of mine. So I took um, part of what I like to do. I, I always wanted to write poetry and, and things like this, right? And so, but took the Science Foundation and then turned that into a career where I get to write about science, I get to talk about science, and I get to come out and, and uh, meet folks like you guys. So if you think about whether I'd ever want to be a scientist or not, some of the things you can think about are the general things out there. Do I like fishing? Do I, do I like the wilderness? Are there certain uh, games I like to play? Do, do I like the technology involved in them? Are there certain shows on TV that I like to watch? All of these things start to inspire your passion in science. And it can lead way, you know, well down the road and, and you do all sorts of interesting things and you move to certain places. Um, there's certain science and technology jobs that in certain geographies, which is also kind of a science area but no fun, um, which in certain geographies are, um, are more prevalent. You know, we, we look in our cars, we, you know, what do we drive on? What, everybody knows what goes in the, the cars to make them go, right? Like gasoline, right? And gasoline comes from oil. Well, the, it's a big oil industry down in Texas. So if you're interested in being a geological engineer, and if you're interested in oil, and if you're interested in cool cars, right? Some of that could be a passion that leads you in that direction as a job. Also, jet planes, right? It's very specific jet fuel goes in the planes, and that leads, you know, leads to these wonderful things that we can do. And these are all great jobs that are out there in science. So, you, you know, sometimes when you consider what the kinds of things I like, like we talked about computers or playing games, and if you're excited about those things, well, there's people in technology jobs that make those games, that get to test them, they get to have some fun with them, and they create more things. And so it gets exciting, even when we're young and we're all enthused. And then further down the line, you stay enthused about it when you grow up and you, you know, get to make money and things with these, which is also very good. So let's talk about some STEM careers. And after you guys get out of here, you'll be telling your friends about STEM and using the word. And hopefully, they'll ask you what it is, and you can tell them, and, and this will all grow. But so there's careers out there, medical scientists, biochemists, physicists all these kind of things, the, the nurses and doctors that we interact with. But there's also, all as we talked about earlier, there's all sorts of other science careers that are real tangible, real close by. The pharmacist that we see when we go to CVS or we go to Walgreens, that's a science person. And like we talked about, our teachers that interact, that's a science person. And one of the reasons why this is so important is that here in the U.S., there's a great demand for us to work in science and technology and math. The kind of jobs that are growing here, the kind of jobs that give a real nice wage in the places that you want to live, 
A lot of them are associated around having a foundation in science. And again, you can have a foundation and then you can still find the things that you want to do. Still find the passions out there. There's a lot of athletes and there's a lot of actors and there's a lot of musicians that if you go back and you look at their background, they went to good schools, they went to college and they got interesting degrees in science. When you look at music, a lot of these guys had um, nice degrees in technology. They used their soundboard to change their music and they've invented new things. So there's some technology jobs out there. and Boy, there's some big numbers when it, you start to look at the salaries that come along. Um, software developers making $100,000 a year. Um, if, if that's the kind of thing that excites you in technology, and if it excites you to make a, a nice living and be able to live maybe on the West Coast, we hear a lot about Apple. We all have our Apple phones and our iPods, and they make the music for us. Well, guys like Steve Jobs created that. And, went to school and they're big technology guys and made all these cool things that we like. And now, as you start to go into school, what kind of applications, what kind of um, apps for your phone, they start to ask you those questions on your, on your resume, on your uh, application to school. So if you're interested in those kind of things and you can do them, you have a special skill or a special passion for them, it can lead to some of these really great degrees and, and really great jobs out there. Engineering, architecture, we go around and we, and we visit different cities and different places and we look at the big buildings that are there. It's some of the things that draw people in. When you go to Paris, right, you get to look at the Eiffel Tower. Well, that was, driven, that was drawn up by an architect. And Eiffel's Tower and, and the Statue of Liberty. These are all folks that were involved and passionate about science, about technology, about engineering. They do amazing things and these amazing things last a lifetime. So why are some of these jobs so important to us? Well, again, we talked about in the future, there's a lot of demand associated to science and technology jobs. It really touches our lives all over the place, from when we heat popcorn up at home in the microwave, or we use our cell phones, or we can text our friends. All of that is science and technology. And someone's got to be there to do it. And not everybody has a passion for it. And that's one of the reasons why we're here today. We're trying to inspire folks that if you like it, and if you have a special gift to do it, that you think about doing it. it, kind of gives back to all the others that are out there too. So take advantage of your special skills that you have in it. Take advantage of special teachers that you have that might be interested in it for you. Jobs are way up. You can see all, the, all of the arrows are pointing up in science and technology. So again, you assure your future if that's what you're looking to do. You can still do all the things that you're passionate about. I, I really believe that. We, we see it, you know, in, in so many different folks. I, I, um, I went to the University of Michigan, and so I use an example of a, of a favorite player of mine named Denard Robinson, who was a quarterback at the University of Michigan. Uh, but Denard also got his degree in communications, and it worked out for Denard that he got drafted in the NFL, and he's going to play a little bit. But you can bet that you'll see Denard more oftentimes on Sundays in the future on this side of the microphone than you'll see on the field. And that's great. And that's a great technology degree for him to have. All right, so the 10 fastest growing jobs out here. So again, we talked about some of them. Software development is out there. Um, computer specialists is out there. Civil engineers, as we see cities that are coming back, a city like Detroit, where we're rebuilding the infrastructure and we're reinvesting in the city. In the long run, you could be a part of that if you're interested in engineering and things of that sort. I really, I'm, uh, I'm especially uh, kin to the, the medical field. Uh, I came up through it and, and did a lot of drug development and working with the pharmaceutical companies. And I worked in the hospitals with a lot of patients. And I think if that's a place that you think that you have some interest, it's a really good place to give back. Every single day you feel really good about what you do. And there's a lot of good careers, you know, from different types of nurses to different types of doctors to surgeons. Even you can get your degree and then you can go into administration and help run some of the hospital businesses. I think that's a very exciting one for, for the future. So there's all kinds of people and they, from different walks of life and different times that have really influenced us. And a lot of them, again, are in science and technology. And if you look into the things that interest you, um, whether it's architecture, whether it's the big buildings of New York, you know, or some of the skyscrapers in London or in Paris, or if you look at enjoyment of cars. These, re these all came from folks that were innovators and that were scientists, um, astronauts, 
and they've developed a lot of things, and they're, and they're all just like us. Different walks of life, they've come from different countries, um, they look different, they look like us. It's really enjoyable when, you, when there's a whole spectrum of people, and we can all do it. So I want to inspire you to go ahead and try to do that, because they all had things in common, and the same things in common that we have. It's, it's really a lot of our interests. These guys were all innovators, you know, and they reached out and they were inventors and they got involved and they pursued their careers and their interests in science and they got inspired with it and they thought, what can I do next? So I guess I kind of want to leave you with today to, if you have ideas about that, reach out to your teachers. If you're inspired by science, if you think it's interesting, you know, if you think our airplanes are kind of cool, reach out to your teachers, reach out to your parents, chat about it. Enjoy the Science Center. It's got so many cool things that it teaches us. And hopefully, one of these days, maybe one of you guys can be standing up here talking to a group of students and helping them try to find their way in science next.